Guys, I'm back. Hi, if it's your first time here, welcome to The Daily Diaries. My name is Crystal and I have been overseas in Europe for the last almost six weeks. This is my first time back behind the camera. I only got back a couple of days ago and uh, yeah, anything could happen today because I am not the most organized, but I think what we're going to be doing today is basically a get ready with me. We are going to do what I did on almost a daily basis while I was away. And then I think I'm gonna split this video into two parts because I think there'll be a second part where I talk about all the makeup that I picked up while I was overseas because I definitely did pick up a few things and it was pretty fun. So <laughs> if it sounds good to you, uh, just hanging out, getting ready and no doubt hearing some stories of my travels, <laughs> then let's dive right on in. Alrighty, so I already have basically just a skin serum underneath. Where did I put that? Hold that thought. I knew I was going to be disorganized. Just, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I'm back in the saddle. <laughs> For those of you who have been here many times, you know I like to sit cross-legged on the chair, but I can't do that at the moment because I have two fresh tattoos and one of them is on my foot. And uh, yeah, I'm not supposed to be doing that kind of behavior. But yeah, you can see this one. Just ignore the fact that it's it's fresh, so it's just starting to scab over at the moment. But I love this one because it is basically a Greek mythology, uh, the bow and arrow of Artemis, who is the warrior goddess. But then you've got the olive leaf, olive branch, which is uh, symbolizes peace and prosperity. And then these are the Greek spirals. And those symbolize energy and the the growth process of life. And you also see them on tops of columns in the Acropolis. So yeah, I just wanted something to remind myself that I'm strong when I'm struggling with endo and other mental health issues. And I feel like that's going to do it for me. So there you go. The one on my foot says, every adventure requires a first step. So that's what I got going on there. Now, let's get into the actual skincare makeup part. So... Every day, just as a little bit of a hydrator, I would use my Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Ultra Fine Mist. I always have this on the plane with me as well, just so I can, you know, give myself a little boost because planes are so dehydrating and that is why my hands are so dry right now as well from the long haul flights. So that stuff goes on. Then I've been taking my LYS Secure Skin Gripping Serum Primer, which I didn't think was gonna last me a whole trip because it looks tiny, but I mean, it is a standard, I think it's a standard 30 mil content. Can't even read that. I think I got blinded while I was away. <laughs> but yeah, it actually goes, a little goes a long way. So been taking that because obviously in Europe it has been summer just like it has in the United States uh, and basically everywhere in the world that's not Australia. Uh, <laughs> so let's rub that in everywhere. Uh, yeah, so I know some of you have been keeping across my travels via Instagram. I'm so sorry. I do have another <laughs> channel on YouTube that I had full intentions of blogging, well, vlogging on. But the truth is, I just didn't have time because I was too busy living my life. <laughs> so I did manage to make time to pop a whole bunch of photos up on Instagram. So I let that settle in just for a little minute. And then now when I went away, I did take a La Roche Posay facial sunscreen, but I've got to say, it's not my favorite. My favorite <laughs> is this Mugu natural tinted SPF 40 face cream. I bloody love this stuff. And I grew to love it even more while I was away. It's kind of a new thing to me. I only picked it up maybe like a week or two before I went. So all skin types, including sensitive skin and people who react to UV filters. So it's clear zinc as a natural physical barrier to protect against UVA and UVB. And so this hydrating face cream is perfect for everyday use. And Mugu is renowned for having as minimal irritating ingredients as possible. So if you have sensitive skin, then this is great for you. A lot of people um, who have eczema use Mugu. So it's very thick. <laughs> So I would just basically take a blob, take a blob, boom, boom. And then if you let it sit just for a little bit on the skin, to be honest, where I was, it was so hot that I didn't really need to even wait because 
it just melted right on. But if you just leave it for a couple of seconds and then kind of smoosh it around, it works an absolute treat. So we started our trip in Athens. That's where we flew into and I've never been to Greece before. It was my fourth trip to Europe because traveling is just my passion in life. It is what it is what I live for, honestly, in between, like, that's why I, I work, <laughs> so I can then leave again. Uh, and it's not that I don't love Australia, because it, I do, it's a fabulous country, <laughs> but it's just what makes me tick exploring, meeting people from all over the world, exploring new cultures, new places. I love historic architecture. I don't know. I just, I live for it. <laughs> So yeah, we started in Athens, just taking a little bit more, because why not? I'm going to keep my face protected. Uh, and Athens was epic. We did four days there to start with. And for someone like me, who has watched a million documentaries on Greek mythology and, you know, the architecture of the Acropolis, etc., <laughs> I was in my nerdy element. It was so surreal being there. And Athens just has the coolest vibe. I have been to Italy before and I've been to Rome and Rome is spectacular. Like it feels like you're in a living museum. But when I was there, I found it kind of stressful and I'm sure that's not the case all the time, but I was there in peak season, but it, you know, there was just like pickpockets everywhere. <laughs> and I had a girl in my group who had her passport and wallet stolen off the train. Just a lot of, I just felt like I was kind of stressed out the whole time and watching myself and just making sure everything was okay. Whereas Athens has the history, but it's so chill. It's so chill. The people are so friendly and the vibe is just really cool. So, you know, I'm, I love it. I loved it. All right. So once that zinc is on, see, it just makes my skin look really bloody nice. I'm obsessed. Anyway, <laughs> so now that that's on, I'm going in with my Emco Beauty Instant Concealer Camouflage and Contour in light. This thing became invaluable to me. Actually, before I do that, I have this, <laughs> eh, I have this little messy pot <laughs> that I took away and I transferred my e.l.f. Beauty Halo Glow Liquid Filter into there. <laughs> And it was just a really bad choice of container for it because it's been doing this the entire trip. <laughs> so uh, because of that reason, I've just been taking my, this brush that I just got off Timu, don't even know what the name of it is, and I'm <laughs> just like wiping it off the pot because, you know, I can. And I've just been popping that over the top of my zinc it's not even necessary because my zinc's nice and glowy anyway but uh, most of the time I didn't bother with foundation except when I was in Germany because the weather was colder so in Munich also I got food poisoning in Munich so that was a good time and we didn't have our own bathroom we were in a hostel with a shared bathroom so that was great <laughs> ah travel gotta love it uh, so yeah in Germany I wore a foundation over this but Honestly, most places I didn't because it was just hot. It was hot and sweaty, which I love. <laughs> That's why I went, because I wanted to escape the cold. All right, so mostly forehead and cheeks is where I've been putting that gear. And maybe a touch there, but just what's left on the brush. Okay, and then I go in with my MCO Beauty Concealer. Yeah, so from Athens, we flew to Munich, which is where the infamous food poisoning incident happened. So just popping that around the eyes. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't ideal. And that was only like, oh, that was like our fifth day away. <laughs> yeah, so we were actually going, we were exploring the Residence Museum, which is incredible, by the way, if you go to Munich, do go to the Residence Museum because it's basically an old palace and you can do an incredible free audio tour. It's just so good. It's one of the best palace attractions I've ever been to. But yeah, we just kind of got in. <laughs> 
I think we would have been in there for like 20 minutes and all of a sudden I was like, I'm going to be sick. And the problem with the residence palace as far as uh, getting food poisoning is that because it's an old palace, like, it's not like it's full of toilets. <laughs> so they've, they've added two public toilets into the palace, but you have to be, <laughs> you have to like get from one end of the palace to the other to get to the toilets. <laughs> so it was not the best timing. So anyway... I don't know how, but I managed to stay in that museum and keep looking at stuff, then running and puking and coming back for about four hours, <laughs> which I think is impressive uh, because it was just that good. I, imagine if I wasn't sick, I would have been obsessed. All right. So basically just, yeah, tapping that concealer kind of wherever there's a bit of redness. I love how this all looks. <laughs> My skin looks so dewy. Dewy and delightful. Uh, yeah, so food poisoning. Uh, <laughs> but thank God, sort of after that day and night, the next day I felt wiped, but I wasn't sick anymore. So that was great. <laughs> and so I was able to kind of get on with my life, which was nice. <laughs> now, after that, I would go in. Oh, I've got something in my eye. Just winking at you because I think you're sexy. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I do have something in my eye. Now, I actually took over with me my Nikia Joy Cosmetics pressed, you know, the velvet pressed powder, uh, but it literally smashed on our third day. <laughs> smashed all over the ground. So I had to pick up something quite desperately, quite urgently. Oh my God, this eye situation is out of control. Let's just pretend it's fine. And so <laughs> I didn't have a lot of options and I hate, I hate picking powder. Picking powder is one of my least favorite things to do in the makeup sphere. And it's because I find it, I find it really difficult. I don't know how it's gonna perform on your face, which is very annoying uh, because I look for something that adds a tiny bit of coverage if I wanna do a touch up throughout the day. I don't want it to be matte and make my skin look cakey, but I also need it to stick to my face so it can't be too shiny. That's all I want, is that too much to ask? <laughs> so what I ended up picking up was the NYX mattifying powder. It's, I think it's Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Yeah, in the shade Light. And I just used this just for my T-zone. So just a little puff. And when I'm not talking, I can get this routine done in like 15 minutes. <laughs> like full face, done. So just pat that on the nose. And a little bit on my chin. And I actually took over a sunscreen powder as well. So I could just whack that on my face throughout the day just to make sure I wasn't getting burnt. Because I do not want my face burnt. Nope. <laughs> All right. So depending on my activities for the day, like if I was just going to the beach, I wouldn't bother doing half of these steps. But I would put a little bit of my pie, the impossible glow bronzing drops on my cheeks and they just give you just a really natural glow. I, yeah, I liked these for when I was going to the beach. Just to add a little something something. So I just kind of dab it off there. <laughs> and these have hyaluronic acid in them as well and they're good for you ingredients, which I love. Okay, so I'll just smush that in there either with my fingers or with my makeup sponge. Mm, it just gives a really subtle, subtle glow, which is very nice. And if I wanted to say, so, okay, so we'll pretend we're going out for the day sightseeing in Belgrade. So I would take my Emco Beauty Instant Contour Cream Bronzer, or I sometimes use my nude sticks all over face color in, oops, sorry, this one, Bondi Bay, which is a really nice bronzer. It's a great bronzer, actually. So let's use that one today. Look how tiny it is. It's perfect for travel. This came in the little set. I think it was the one with the lip color, the orangey lip color, Picante, which I really like as well, but I didn't take that with me. So from Munich, we went to 
God, where did we go from Munich? Oh, we went to Austria. So we went to Salzburg, which was a lot of fun. We did a salt mines tour, which was awesome. You got to slide down these really cool big slippery dips to get into the mines. That was definitely the funnest part because I'm a child and I love rides. <laughs> Always will. But, yeah, in Salzburg, we were just sitting there having lunch and they have like a wasp thing. I, it's bizarre because in Australia we don't – we don't have many wasps. We have a lot of flies. <laughs> they have wasps everywhere in Salzburg. And we were sitting at lunch waiting for food to come out. And I was trying to swat away the wasps that were in my face. And then next thing you know, I got stung by a bloody bee on my arm. I'm like, what? Where did that even come from? And it really hurt. I haven't been stung by a bee since I was a small child. And let me tell you, it bloody hurts. <laughs> So that was completely random, I don't know, completely unprovoked. If it was in a court of law, I think the law would side with me. <laughs> so anyway, in Salzburg we also did the Sound of Music tour, which was really fun because obviously the Sound of Music was filmed there, also in studios in Hollywood. Okay, so now I've got some bronzer on and let's do eyebrows now. Before I went away, I tinted my brows and I've actually done it since I got back as well because I have naturally fair everything. <laughs> my natural hair color is a dark blonde and so that's my natural eyebrow color too, but I do enjoy being a brunette. <laughs> so I am using in my brows the e.l.f. brunette brow tint which is really hard to come by. I had to get this from, I don't know, like Beautylish or No Cult Beauty or somewhere. Cause I can't buy this shade in Australia, which is odd, I don't know why. Maybe it's discontinued, not sure. But when it runs out, I'll cross that bridge. I used to always use the Benefit Gimme Brow, which I still love and is probably still my favorite, but it's just so bloody expensive. And this is really good for the price. I haven't had any trouble with it. Okay, so eyebrows on, slightly uneven <laughs> today. Oh, I think I'm still jet lagged. I got back and I've been working for the last two days, so I haven't really had recovery time until today. Had to film a voiceover yesterday for a government campaign. It's coming out, so you might hear it on your radio if you're in Australia. <laughs> I play the mum. <laughs> All right, so eyebrows on. Now, while I was away, I was absolutely loving eyeshadow sticks just because they're so quick and easy. And I took a couple from Mecca Max. I have this one, which is a bronzy shade. And I know you can't get Mecca. Well, actually, I think you can get Mecca overseas. You just have to call them and order it and they'll ship it out to you. So that was one of their Zoom eyeshadow sticks. The shade is, I might have worn off. Oh no, that shade is copper. I also took my Danessa Myricks cream shadows. I took latte and um, brownie, I think, but I barely use those. I did, however, use my Danessa Myricks color fix foil in Venus a lot. So I had like two kind of go-to looks. I had like a pinky look and then I had a bronzy look. So when I was doing the pinky eyeshadow look, I used my Danessa Myricks Color Fix Foil in Venus over the eyelid, which is like a pinky, coppery stunner. Here, let me put some on my hand for you. Although it was getting stuck, so I need to pop it with a pin. <laughs> yeah, it's still still stuck there a bit. Yeah, you see how that's it's just a stunning, like, pinky, coppery shade. Sorry, it's not coming out very well there. Uh, but I used that, and I used that with my MAC Color Excess gel pencil eyeliner in Nudge Nudge Ink Ink, which is a beautiful, warm, coppery brown color. And then I would just for funsies add a little bit of my Pillow Talk Crystal Dimension eyeliner from Charlotte Tilbury, which is my favorite thing in the world. And if she stops making it, I will cry. Uh, <laughs> so I would do that look. Or this is the other look that I did, and I'm gonna do this one today. I used my Mecca Zoom Shadow Stick Matte in Terracotta, which may be my favorite eyeshadow stick of all time. Before this, it was Bobbi Brown's taupe. I used to use that like it was going out of style, but I'm obsessed with this color because you don't see this in many eyeshadow sticks. 
it's really unique and if you have hazel eyes or green eyes, uh, which I do, it makes them absolutely pop. So I'll go in there with this. Wee! Oh, it's such a cool color. Such a cool color. And I only took a few brushes, literally. I reckon these are all the brushes that I took. So a couple of face brushes, a blush brush and a couple of blenders for my eyeshadow because I knew I'd need to blend out my eyeshadow sticks. Yeah, so Salzburg, Sound of Music, all of that, that was incredible. Then we went to Hallstatt, which is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. It is absolutely stunning. And since getting back, I've heard that they're actually capping the amount of tourists they're going to let go there because... Hallstatt is a tiny, tiny little village in uh, the location is, is what makes it so special. It is basically in the side of a mountain and the way to access it is by a little boat. So you have to go across a lake and it is so, so darn beautiful. I feel so privileged that I got to go there and experience that. And it's sort of a once in a lifetime thing, especially for Australians, because it's hard to bloody get to. So, yeah, I, I feel so lucky I went there. And there's rumours that it was the place that inspired the village in Frozen, which I can 100% see. <laughs> so I like to run that all over my eye. And you can already see without anything else on my eyes how much it makes the colour of my eye pop. It's crazy. It actually looks a bit freaky. <laughs> so, yeah, and just blending that out with my little refer brush and this is honestly like this is just such an easy quick look to do when I'm not yabbering on <laughs> so yeah I'm absolutely obsessed with this zoom stick from Mecca it's my my favorite is what I've been smashing basically I would just do that and then in the earlier part of my travels before I picked up anything else I was just using my nude sticks this is the I think it's the all over highlight stick in Hey Honey. I have bubbly, is it bubbly? Oh, bubbly baby. But this one has more warmth to it. The other one's more of a champagne. This one has more warmth, which I love. How much is left? Oh, heaps. These things last forever. So I would just take a little of that on my finger and I would use that as a little bit of a, in a corner highlight. This is such a like low key, easy look to do. Lovely. Yep, so Holstat, stunning. Oh, if you ever get the chance to go there, I can't recommend it more highly, but just be mindful that people live there. I think it's, it's a very small population. I think it's like 700 people. Oh, that could be a complete lie, but it's a small population and, you know, they get overrun with tourists. So I think they get fed up with people constantly, like, trying to take selfies where they're trying to live their lives and stuff. So it's always just good to be mindful of that kind of thing if you're traveling. All right. So I might do my blush before I finish off my eyes. This thing was invaluable to me. My Danessa Myricks Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. This one is Dew It Flirty. I was going to take Dew It Undercover as well, but I, in the name of trying to not take too much stuff, I settled just on this one and it had everything I needed. I couldn't have asked for more. I did actually take my Melt Cosmetics Sundown Cream Blush Light as well which I did use a couple of times, but yeah, this just, it, if you're traveling, I can't recommend this more highly. It's just the best product and it's cream. So it's not going to crack and break. So good. So I would go in with maybe, hmm, uh, let's go this one. Let's keep it nice and bright and coral. So after Holstadt, and by the way, we got around most places by train. Uh, so we had a lot of long train trips, but it's great because when you go by train, you avoid airports, which means you avoid having to like do the whole putting your liquids in a bag and getting there three hours early to <laughs> go to a different country. <laughs> so yeah, trains, awesome. So after that, we went to, oh yeah, after Austria, we went to Slovenia. Slovenia is great. Ljubljana is such a beautiful city. 
It's a small city. Slovenia only has about 300,000 people, but it's beautiful. And Ljubljana, uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. Also, if you're a dessert person, they smash the desserts over there. They're so good. <laughs> but yeah, really enjoyed our time in Ljubljana. My, my bed broke <laughs> the night. We didn't get in there until like midnight once we got off the train and, and found where the heck we were. And then <laughs> I sat on the bed and it broke. But uh, apart from that, it was fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful. The finish that these give you is so dewy and so lovely. Oh, I love these palettes. So, <laughs> yeah, so Slovenia, Ljubljana, we had a fantastic time there. It's a beautiful place. I definitely recommend going. It's, it's just, it's a lovely city. But something that we found really difficult to come to grips with, I'm just going in with the same highlight stick I used in the corner of my eyes, is the smoking. So in Australia, smoking barely happens anymore. <laughs> You can't smoke anywhere indoors. You can't smoke in beer gardens where people eat, which is so good. And yeah, there's so many rules about smoking. And just not many people do it anymore because they made it so expensive. <laughs> and you couldn't smoke anywhere near <laughs> where your friends were. So basically, it's a very small population that smoke now, as opposed to the 80s when everyone smoked. But... Going overseas, smoking is so common, especially countries like Slovenia, Serbia. Serbia, I've never seen so many people smoke as I have in Serbia. Yeah, those were the two big ones. Greece, people smoke as well, but not, not as much. But and, and no judgment if you're a smoker, that's fine. But I don't want to breathe cigarette smoke when I'm living my life. <laughs> Because I'm a, I choose not to smoke, and yeah, so that was really crazy to deal with. Like when we were in uh, Belgrade, which is where we went after Slovenia, we were literally we were sitting inside at a bar, and the staff, <laughs> the staff at the bar, stood at the bar next to us and started smoking. We're like, what is happening? <laughs> it was so weird for us because we're so not used to that. Uh, but apart from that, the people in uh, Serbia were absolutely lovely. So, and yeah, Serbia, like it was a cool place to go because not many people go there. Well, from Australia, it's not like a big tourist hotspot, but I like going places that are different, you know? <laughs> All right, now I'm just putting my moles back in with this cheap product. I don't even know what it is anymore because the label rubbed off about a year ago. Just like to put my moles back or I feel a bit naked. Okay, so yeah, Serbia was great. We didn't... Oh, we went to Croatia too. We went to Zagreb. I forgot about that. <laughs> and Zagreb was great as well. Same situation, smoking everywhere. Also vaping is really big over there. But we did a really interesting tour in Zagreb that was... A history of war tour because those countries have been through absolute hell <laughs> uh, and not not in the distant past like we're talking 20 years ago maybe or like 30 years ago so that was really fascinating to do and very interesting and you know our guide was excellent and passionate sorry I'm talking a lot and quite quickly <laughs> because I have so much to recap and tell you. But yeah, so that was interesting. Serbia was great. And then we went back to Greece. We took an overnight ferry for 10 hours, which was really cool, actually. Just looking for my eyeliner. Now I did take my, <laughs> look at the size of this, my Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame eyeliner, which is just my favorite, as you can tell, eyeliner ever. And, oh God, just whack a bit of that on. And this is true to life because I was very messy while I was there because I just didn't really care that much. Just wanted to get it on and get out. <laughs> oh, that's the other brush I took. I took one more brush, which was an angled brush, just so I could blend out my notoriously messy eyeliner. Just, the problem is I just don't care enough to do it properly. Obviously, if I'm doing a liquid liner, I'm careful. <laughs> So went back to Greece via a 10 hour ferry to Crete, which, oh my God, we loved Crete. We stayed in the town of Hanya, which is an old town and it's just picture perfect. I loved it. And the people were so bloody friendly and they kept giving us free stuff. 
like after our meals because for me it's really hard to find food to eat in Europe because I'm gluten free and in Australia we are so lucky we have so many gluten free options I can go anywhere and get a gluten free pizza base or burger bun or whatever it is so I can eat all the good stuff but over there oh my god no one it's so rare I think I found like two places in Europe that had gluten free pizza base I ate one burger the entire time I was there. So I basically lived on chips and ice cream because <laughs> they're gluten-free. And salad, of course. I ate stacks of salad. And in Greece, the salads are amazing. And I got to eat delicious yogurt and fruit combos as well. So that was awesome. But, yeah, it's a difficult thing, especially in countries like Serbia and Croatia, and Germany, Austria, because they're very bread-based, I think. <laughs> Yeah, so we went back to this one place multiple times because they had good gluten-free options in Hanya in Crete. And they kept every time at the end of the meal, they'd give us free desserts and they'd bring out like a jug full of like this big, full of alcohol for free shots. But the problem is they kept bringing us rakia. And if you have had rakia, it basically tastes like you're drinking methylated spirits. It's disgusting. <laughs> but it's the traditional drink. So we just drank it out of politeness, but... Oh. <laughs> but everyone was so bloody generous in Crete and just so warm and friendly and welcoming. Loved it. The history there is epic as well. You can go to a Mycenaean settlement, which is just <laughs> mind-blowing to see if you love history. So that was epic. Then we went to Santorini via ferry. And Santorini, the... Natural beauty is spectacular. It's really something to see. And it's probably somewhere I'll never go again. It's sort of a, a once in a lifetime thing. It's very extensive. But I'm, I'm really glad we went there. It was pretty spectacular. And then from Santorini, we went to Eos. And we didn't really know what to expect with Eos. We kind of booked it because we booked our trip so late that we just went where there was accommodation and <laughs> we could get to <laughs> And yeah, EOS is a lot smaller than anywhere else that we had been. And it was so bloody windy. So really the thing that you want to do there is kind of hang out at the beach. But it was really difficult to do that because it was so, so windy. We did do that one day though. And we went on a one of those like lounge rides like behind a speedboat, which was a lot of fun. But we actually ended up deciding to go back to Athens a day early and spending another day there at the end of our trip. Oh, oh, I forgot to say, when I was in Crete, I got bitten by fish on my foot. What the hell? <laughs> Everyone always says Australia is dangerous and, you know, how does anyone survive? I've never been bitten by a fish in Australia and I've spent a lot of time in the water. <laughs> Although, you know, better a fish than a shark, right? <laughs> All right, so that was just my tart opening at Lash Primer and now I'm going in with my Hourglass Unlocked Instant Extensions Mascara. So... <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, we went back to Athens at the end of our trip and we went to see a theatre production, which was so cool. It was on a rooftop at the base of the Acropolis. So the view, you were literally sitting there watching the actors and the Acropolis behind them in the evening and it was, it was incredible. We were meant to go the day before, but it, they had like a once in a bloody 20 year storm. It was bucketing we got so wet like little drowned rats but it was worth it Athens is still awesome even when it's wet <laughs> so yeah and then uh yeah after that I went and got my two tattoos and unfortunately it was basically time to come home <laughs> but what an incredible trip I had and, and how lucky I am to have done it mm, I will say most of my suitcase, honestly, I have so many medications I have to take, hot water bottles, TENS machines, you know, endo survival tools. I have to take pain meds, nausea meds, migraine meds, uh, meds to help my bowels work properly, all of the good stuff. But it's so bloody worth it. It will never, I will never be defeated. Traveling is what I love and I will do it forever. I'm going to be one of those, like, 90-year-old women just, like, partying in the streets in Spain <laughs> on, on holidays. That's my dream. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm eternally grateful that I get to travel. And, I mean, you know, don't get me wrong, it's a sacrifice because 
I don't, I will never have a house. And that's a choice that I've made though. Like I pay so many medical bills for endo. It would be really difficult anyway. And then I'm like, well, I might as well use the money that I make outside of that to do the thing I love most in the world. And I am so happy to make that decision. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would love to hear from you if you've been to any of those places and, and what your thoughts were. And if you're gearing up for a trip, tell me where you're going. Cause yeah, travel is, is passion. <laughs> So now I'm back settling in and literally I'm like, right, I need to save so I can plan for next year's trip. Hopefully if things go, if things go well and I'm not doing another surgery. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows where next time? So that's the gist. Obviously there are a million, a million stories and moments that happen within all those days, you know, and people you meet that you will remember forever just randomly you know people that showed you kindness that's one thing I think you learn when you travel and you're reliant on people because we didn't have and I never do I never travel with a sim card so the only time I have internet is when I have wi-fi from a hostel or you know a public square or something like that and so that means that you're reliant on people's kindness and help often for directions or, you know, to try and work out how to get somewhere, buses, trains, taxis, all that kind of gear. You can't call a taxi. <laughs> so we had many instances of people being incredibly kind to us and going above and beyond to try and help us get where we needed to go. And it's something that it teaches you when you travel is how much kindness in the world there is. Because when you're you know, living your life at home, you have everything you need, you, you, you know, you have your directions, you know where you're going, all that kind of gear. You're not reliant on strangers really ever. And so there's not the opportunities to see how kind people can be. So I think that's one of the things I love about traveling is, is that it does show there are some really beautiful people in this world and it's just a delight. So that is the eye makeup done. That's the face done, basically. Got a bit of a smudge there, but whatever, because we're living the dream uh, outside in paradise while we're traveling. Who cares, right? So <laughs> for lips, I am loving, well, I took not very many things for lips, to be honest. For a lipstick girl, that was really hard. But I took my Bobbi Brown, this is just a little sample one, Crushed Liquid Lip Eros, is it? Oh, Encore, I think. It's the really red one, which I love. I took my Lana Lips Rhubarb 15 plus, oh, 30 plus <laughs> SPF lip tint. I will say it does taste like sunscreen downside and I also took my RMS lip lights in Babette which I love this stuff is so beautiful so I was kind of if I was doing a corally look using one of these bad boys let's do Bobby because I was really enjoying this product while I was away obviously you can get it in a full size <laughs> I used to work for Bobby Brown a long long time ago and she does very good lip products which I think are underrated I think people don't realize how good her lip products are. Love it. Okie dokie. And then because I would no doubt have thoroughly oily or salty hair <laughs> from lack of washing and swimming in the ocean, I would take my favorite bandana. I have one in red and one in black. <laughs> it's so good for just, I love head accessories because when you, you, I just, I'm so lazy when it comes to doing my hair and this way it looks like I've done something fancy, but I definitely haven't. <laughs> okay. So that is the finished look. Let me zoom you in just for a sec so you can see up close. Okay, so they are the eyes, that is the skin, which I think looks beautiful and radiant, but obviously you can still see through it because I'm not wearing foundation. And yeah, I love the lips as well. So that is the finito look. That is what I looked like uh, most of the time <laughs> while I was traveling. And yeah, 
Let me just tell you really quickly about a couple of things that I couldn't have lived without on my travels as well, just in case you are doing a trip. Perfume. I don't wear normal perfume because I get migraines and they trigger me. So I have to go with like really pure like essential oils and things. And this one from doTERRA is probably my all time favorite. It's called Passion and it is a mix of beautiful essential oils. I'm trying to see if I can see exactly what's in here. So it has uh, cocoa oil. Yeah, cinnamon bark oil. A passion flower extract, vanilla bean. Look, it's just got a bunch of really good stuff in there, okay? <laughs> I love it. I'm actually going to put some on now. And it's tiny, so it's perfect for travel. And I actually had a guy sitting next to me on a plane. He was very good looking. And <laughs> he was like, what are you, what perfume are you wearing? And I said, oh, it's actually essential oils. And he's like, I could tell it's beautiful. It smells so pure. And I was like, yeah, yeah, it does. <laughs> so yeah, so that I love for travel. Also my dry shampoo. This one's from Raw Beauty. It's an Australian brand, but it's, you know, same gist. I'm sure there's something similar overseas, but this one is tinted brown and it's all uh, natural. It smells like chalk mint and I love it because it's not an aerosol. I hate using aerosol dry shampoos because I hate breathing in all those chemicals and I just hate spraying them into the air. So this one also is really convenient because I can just chuck it in my carry-on. No one's going to be annoyed at me for having an aerosol in there. I think technically... I don't know. It depends who you fly with as to whether you can have aerosols on you or not. But this one I know I can have everywhere no matter what. So I love that. Couldn't live without that. I'm <laughs> dry shampooing the crap out of my hair every day. Uh, also, this is kind of left of center, but I love not wearing a bra in summer. It's my favorite pleasure. And also in Europe, I love it because it's like acceptable not to wear bras. Whereas in Australia, I don't know, it's much more. We're just we're on tight, okay? But so I bought these off Amazon. They are 40 pairs nipple covers and they're stick on ones. I wore them in the ocean as well because my my bikini top had a habit of just like popping my boobs out, which actually happened in Lake Bled in Slovenia. Uh, literally nipples out for everyone to see and I didn't even realize for a little <laughs> It took me a minute to realize. Fortunately, no one was looking in my direction. But anyways, these ones are perfect if you just want to stick something under, like if you don't want to wear a bra, but you just want to, you know, just have a little bit of something protection in case something goes awry. These were so cheap and they, I have really sensitive skin. They did not irritate my skin. They stayed on. I think I actually forgot about them. I left them on for two days at one point. Still didn't irritate my skin. So yeah, those were awesome. I'll try and remember to link to those if you're in the market. <laughs> for some. And this deodorant, I have to talk about this because it's the best one I've ever used in my freaking entire long life. <laughs> it's not that long. Uh, this is called Deonat. It is one of the crystal deodorants. This is the sports stick crystal deodorant. It cost me six bucks. So with these ones, you have to wet them before you put them on. But I have been on a mission for the last couple of years trying to find a natural deodorant that actually works. <laughs> and I hadn't found one. This, I was really skeptical. I picked it up just before I went and the lady was like, we've had so many people really like this deodorant. So I was like, yep, we'll give it a go. It's tiny, it's compact, let's do it. I've never worn anything better in my life. If you are gonna have a pressure test for a deodorant, it is when you're walking around all day in 40 degree heat, <laughs> like, from, from literally daytime until you get in the door at like 2 a.m. in the morning again. And I did not smell at all, not once did I smell. And the thing that's even cooler is that not only did I not smell, but you know how like obviously most deodorants leave your clothes smelling like deodorant, even if they manage to make you not stink? This has no smell. So instead it was like my clothes were perfectly clean, like they'd never even been worn. And I have worn them sweaty for like 12 hours. So I just can't recommend this highly enough. It is the most epic deodorant I've ever used and I will never use anything else. And it was six bucks. And it will last me for a hundred years. Cause look, I've been using it every day and it's still like, <laughs> it's just never gonna die. So I, I just had to tell you about it because I just, no, I'm not sponsored, by the way, in any way, shape or form. But I just want you to know that this is a miracle deodorant <laughs> because I am thrilled. I didn't even have to wash my, well, obviously I wash my clothes, but like 
you just it, it didn't smell like anything and it leaves no white marks so there you go I'm finished ranting about that now oh the other thing that saved me while I was away was my Dermalogica skin oh, what is this called deep breakout liquid patch I really had very good skin while I was away. I think my body just really enjoyed all that vitamin D. But, you know, every now and then if it felt like a pimple was coming, I'd whack some of this on it and honestly, it just disappeared again. I can't believe how good it was. So <laughs> that was another thing I picked up just before I went and I'm thrilled about it. So that is everything I think I want to talk about today. No doubt I will kick myself afterwards and be like, why didn't you talk about that or that or that? But... <laughs> <laughs> for now let's wrap this up if you would like to see more content from me I would be thrilled to have you make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and the little bell thing so that you know when I put something up and I'd love if you could leave a thumbs up and a comment as well because you know I love it it, it means the world to me to hear from you guys and I will be back very very soon I'm gonna do yeah a video talking about all the stuff that I picked up while I was away and yeah we might play with some of that gear so I'll see you very soon <sighs> I'm back baby <laughs> take care bye